Let's look at a typical demonstration reactor, so-called demo, or commercial reactor uh, blanket designs. So typically, the, the next generation concepts would include either helium-cooled or water-cooled ceramic lithium breeder, where the lithium is used to breed tritium, with beryllium as a neutron multiplier. It could be also helium-cooled or water-cooled so-called lead lithium eutectic, where the lithium there is a breeder, tritium breeder, and the lead will be the multiplier. It could also be a dual cool liquid left lithium and helium. And all of these will use low activation ferric steel as structural material to have a, a, a structural material with a reduced half-life. And here I'll just show you an example of a typical dual cool lead lithium helium blanket concept. We have uh, helium coolant is used to cool the box and the first wall. And the lead lithium then flows slowly in the middle, removes the heat generated inside the lead lithium itself, and then flows out of the blanket, where then the tritium can be removed also from, from it and used as fuel for the reaction. Of course, there are a number of key issues that still need to be addressed, including the effect of man magneto hydrodynamic uh, in, when flowing a liquid metal uh, in a magnetic field, and also electrical insulation integrity, material compatibility, and others. But typically, such a concept can be uh, can be used with a Breton cycle to generate electricity using helium as a secondary loop, where the, basically the heat is transferred from the, the, the coolant, the blanket coolant, to the secondary loop, which is then used to generate uh, electricity for a Breton cycle. Now let's look at the blanket concepts for the different phases of ITER. Just to recap a little bit on the different phases of ITER, ITER was established in 86-87 as an international collaboration among the USA, the USSR at the time, European Commission and Japan, under the organization of the IAEA. From 88 to 91, the conceptual design activities were held in Garching, Germany, used to select the machine parameters and objectives. From 92 to 98, the engineering design activities phase which, uh, was, was held, where then the design was developed capable of ignition, but it turned out to be a very large and expensive design. Unfortunately, at the end of the EDA, the US decided to withdraw from the project. Then there was an extension to 2001 with the remaining parties, which searched for a less ambitious goal, a slightly smaller machine, with reduced plasma, uh, reduced plasma power, but still uh, giving a lot of information, important information about uh, fusion reaction and how to produce fusion energy. Then the US rejoined, and then uh, other parties also were interested. And in 2006, uh, the ITER agreement was signed at the Elysee Palace in Paris among China, Europe, India, Japan, Korea, Russian, the Russian Federation, and the US. And now the ITER, ITER organization was officially established in 2007. And now we are through the fabrication and operation phase at Cadarache, France. And I have the, the opportunity actually to be involved in a few of these phases, starting with the CDA, then the EDA, and now the fabrication and operation phase in Cadarache. So if we look back a little bit at how the blanket evolved during these different phases, at first, during the CDA, we had a breeding blanket design where we use lithium ceramic breeder or lithium lead as a breeder and low temperature water as a coolant. With uh, lithium ceramic, we also had barium as a, as a neutron multiplier. You can see a schematic of how the, the blanket will look like, a cross-section of the blanket. And then during the EDA uh, phase, uh, we decided to consider the operation of ITER in two phases, a so-called basic performance phase, where we would use a non-breeding simpler blanket, and then an enhanced performance phase later on where the non-breeding blanket will be replaced by a breeding blanket, which will be a water-cooled lithium ceramic one. And you can see here, typically, uh, this breeding, breeding blanket concept, which was considered during the EDA. Then, as from the late EDA phase and, and all the way to now, uh, basically the focus was on a shielding blanket, which is basically uh, a non-breeding blanket. So the, during the EDA, the, 
which <coughs> the blanket was viewed as a in, as an integrated shield block and first wall, and with the water temperature at 140 to 190 degrees C. And you could already see from, from this time, this was in the late 90s, some of the major features which are still used now in the current ITER blanket, such as a modular arrangement, the attachment scheme with flexible supports at the back, the electrical straps to conduct the current to vacuum vessel, and the branch pipe connections for the water coolant connection. So from this time, the focus was clearly then on the shielding non breeding blanket to reduce the complexity for the first ever blanket to operate in a fusion reactor. So the focus then was a non breeding low temperature, oscillating steel as structural uh, material and barium armor, which is now the heater blanket. So the heater blanket then will cover most function of a reactor blanket. And the TBM program in ITER will cover the rest. You can see the function one to five here are covered by ITER. The two functions that the ITER blanket doesn't cover, which is to breed tritium to show that tritium self-sufficiency can be achieved, and also to remove energy deposition with high quality, which means high temperature coolant for effective power generation. These two functions, we will have a lot of information from testing of demo relevant test blanket modules in the ITER equatorial ports. So this is how we're going to learn a lot about the blanket from the base blanket in ITER and also from the TBM program. Let's look now at the current blanket ITER design. You can see the ITER tokamak on the top left there, and then you can see a typical sector. This, and the sector consists of a number of blanket modules going from the bottom left, from module one to six is called the, in the inboard, module seven to 10 on the top is the, is the top region, and module 11 and 18 is, on the, is the outboard region. And this sector, the, 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 blanket, the blanket module in these sectors are basically fed by a blanket manifold system, the coolant that flows in and out from the blanket manifold system. If we look at each module, blanket module, it is basically made up of a shield block at the back, on top of which a first wall panel is attached. And you can see the first wall panel facing the plasma with the green being the barium tiles, which, which face the plasma. And then you have a blanket module connection so that are used to attach the, the shield block to the vacuum vessel at the back. And you can see how the procurement is divided between the different parties. Uh, in the case of a blanket manifold system, it is being procured by the European Domestic Agency. The first wall panel is being procured by the Chinese dom Domestic Agency 10% of it by the Chinese domestic, domestic agency, 50% by Europe, and 40% by Russia. The shield block is 50-50 between China and Korea, and the blanket module connections are procured by uh, the Russian Federation. It's a blanket design challenge. As I mentioned before, this is the first of a kind fusion blanket in the first of a kind fusion experimental reactor. The blanket is one of the most challenging components to be designed for ITER. It has to accommodate high heat fluxes from the plasma during steady state, but also during off normal events, large electromagnetic loads from AD and ELO currents, its interfaces with major systems and components, a lot of interfaces. It is attached mostly against gravity, and it needs to accommodate often conflicting, conflicting requirements from interfacing systems. For example, for diagnostics and other systems, they need cutouts or gaps through the blanket. But for the component at the back, they need neutron shielding, which means that you need to reduce the gaps and cutouts. So there's always some sort of uh, uh, balance between the different conflicting requirements to be had. Now, for historical reasons, the interfacing components at ITER were and still are at substantially different levels of maturity, which creates a major interface issue. For example, vacuum vessel was already in procurement when the blanket was still in the design phase. Now the blanket is in procurement. We have diagnostic systems still in the design phase. And the blanket is right in the middle of these different components. And I would say, <laughs> we often use that when talking about the, the, the blanket, we talk about the Ghostbuster, the Ghostbuster syndrome. There was a movie a number of years ago called Ghostbuster. You can see the little logo here. And there was a, a song from it. And the song said that you know, there's something strange happening in the neighborhood, who you're going to call? So it's a bit the same with a blanket. If there's a problem somewhere, who you're going to call? If you need more shielding because the, the toroidal field coils, uh, the heat in the toroidal field coils is too high, you call the blanket to try to increase the shielding. 
if there's a uh, plasma scenario which changes resulting with higher heat fluxes on the first wall, who are you going to call to accommodate, accommodate it? The blanket. If there's a gas injection system which needs to be re reconfigured, who are you going to call? The blanket to, to be able to accommodate that. And diagnostic the same. So basically, <laughs> this is why we call it the Ghostbuster syndrome. And this is a major lesson for future reactor. It's very important that the design integration, which is a key element, but the design integration of interfacing components should be developed over time at similar design level and with realistic tolerances. So in the case of ITER, our design must take into account interfaces with many other systems, including physical interfaces with vacuum vessel manifolds and all the other components shown here, functional interfaces with the physics scenarios for startup and ramp down of the plasma, the flat top during the burn, off normal events, this create heat and EM loads on the blanket, neutron shielding, we need to protect the coils and vacuum vessel as best we can from the neutron heating, and then removal of the fusion power from, <coughs> and then we have the tokamak cooling water system, which, which basically interfaces with us and also the manifold and others. So in a few numbers, uh, ITER blanket system, you have 440 blanket modules in all. The maximum allowable mass for each module is 4.5 tons. This is based on, the, on remote handling requirement. In order, to, in order to maintain the blanket, we cannot go higher than 4.5 tons, which means that the total mass is about 1,500 tons. The first wall coverage surrounding the plasma is 600, about 600 meters square. And as material, as armor material facing the plasma, we use beryllium. At heat sink, just behind, we use a high, highly conductive material, which is a, an alloy of copper, copper, chromium, zirconium. And as structural material, we use stainless steel 316 heater grade. And the maximum total thermal load to be removed from the blanket is 678 megawatt to be removed by the cooling system. If we include also the ports, this goes up to 736 megawatt. And the cooling water conditions at the inlet are 4 megapascal of pressure and 70 degrees Celsius temperature. 